Today we are here at Ewell Bridge, Haslingdon, to uncover the bizarre and tragic death of a 43-year-old signalman by the name of Samuel Alexander Gaines. His body will be discovered over 36 hours after his mysterious disappearance from the cabin box where he was located, which was only a quarter of a mile away from where his body would be located at a nearby sewerage treatment works. But what led to his disappearance and what would ultimately lead to his death? Now, very little is known of Samuel Alexander Gaines. We do know from research that he was born in 1869 over in Largan in Ireland. And by the 1870s, he was living in Staffordshire with his family. Now, at the age of 25, he married a young lady by the name of Francis Maria Robbins. And they had a son called Thomas Henry. Now he sadly passed away at the tender age of just one month and 10 days. By 1901, Samuel and Francis had two more children. They had Nora Ellen and they had another daughter who they would also call Francis Maria. Now they relocated here to the northwest of England and Haslenden and at number 13 Haig Street. By 1910, Samuel had advanced his role within the rail network to one of being a signalman. And he had also relocated from 13 Haig Street to number 13 High Street here in Ewell Bridge. Also at this time in his life, he had a third daughter by the name of Marion Edith. Now together, the family lived in harmony. There was never any bother. They got on really well, not just with each other, but with also the neighbors, as well as obviously Samuel's employers. We're going to fast forward to September the 25th, 1911, and it was a Monday evening. Samuel, he would kiss Francis, his wife, goodbye for the evening. He started his shift at the signal box at eight o'clock each evening, and his hours would run through till 6 a.m. the following morning. Now he kissed his wife goodbye. She would later go on to tell people that he, he left in good harmony, in good spirits, seemingly nothing bothering him but he went to work as normal. Now we know at around 9.15 or 9.30 that same evening, Samuel was next seen alive in the local public house called the Bridge Inn. A man by the name of Robert Hargreaves would speak to Robert and ask him what turn he was on. In other words, what are your hours? And Samuel just replied, all night. Now Samuel and Robert, they had a couple of drinks together and Samuel would eventually leave and make his way back to the signal box where he was employed to work at. Where we are now placing the red arrow is roughly within a couple of meters of where the cabin or the signal cabin box was once located and it is there where Samuel Gaines used to work. At around quarter past 11 that same evening, Samuel would signal a train to pass through from Rottenstall to Bury. So we know at that time of the evening, Samuel was still alive. He was still working in the signal box. However, at around two o'clock the following morning, so Tuesday the 26th, another train that was trying to pass by had to stop because the driver of the train would simply tell at the coming inquest that the signals were against him. Now, obviously not being able to continue with the journey with the train, the train driver actually got out and he went into the cabin box where Samuel should have been working. When the driver got inside, he found a set of keys, an overcoat and a fire that was barely lit. But there was no sign of Samuel or anybody else. 
So what had happened to Samuel and why had he vacated this signal box when, in my opinion, it was such an important role that he was playing, he was employed to do. For over 36 hours, there was no sign of Samuel Alexander Gaines. What had happened to him? And like I said, why had he vacated this signal box? It was on Wednesday, the 27th of September 1911, and an employer at the nearby sewerage water treatment works here in Ewell Bridge would make a horrifying discovery. In tank number four, one of the precipitating tanks, he came across the body of a deceased man. The body was lying roughly in 18 inches of raw sewerage. The police were quickly informed and the works manager, Elijah Law, was informed. He quickly made his way down to where we are now, just outside the treatment works. The body was quickly covered and taken to the bridge in public house and a formal identification was quickly made by Frances Maria Gaines and she would identify the body of that of being her husband Samuel. On Friday the 29th of September 1911 an inquiry into the death of Samuel Gaines took place at the same pub where his body was taken to on the Wednesday and that was at the bridge in public house. Now the first person to speak would be that of Frances Marie Gaines, wife of Samuel. And she would go into detail about the family life and about his demeanour in general and how he was a happy-go-lucky kind of character. He didn't really suffer from any ill health like Maria did, or Frances did I should say. And that he was a normal working class man. He went to work, he came home, he spent time with the family and he never caused anybody any trouble. Now she was asked if her husband Samuel was showing any signs of any mental illnesses or any signs that he wanted to take his own life and Francis simply said no, never. He was an always seemingly a happy-go-lucky kind of character. Vicky's just spotted an old set of stone steps that used to go down into the actual treatment works themselves and this is what we're talking about how again it's conceivable Samuel may have come this far down and to the entrance of the building he may well have used something like this here it's difficult for the for the camera to pick it out but just through the gates here there are some stone steps leading down at the side of this building here yeah, I mean, like Vicky just said, it would have been open. Now, there is the old wrought iron fence. Now, I remember this being here from when I was a kid because my dad used to work here for many, many, many years before he moved over to Burnley. But this was his, this is where he was working when I knew him most as a child. And I remember seeing all these wrought iron fences even back then when he used to come down and wait for him. Chances are this fence would have continued but it's still conceivable for the being steps here for this to have had a gate yeah, and Samuel could well have easily have snuck down here and towards the tanks which we'll show you shortly but just on our left coming up is the main entrance to the waterworks themselves, the sewerage works and like I said I remember these well from when my father worked here like I said many many years ago so we'll just take you guys around now. Now obviously we can't trespass. We're not going to go. We're not going to get access to the place itself. But this is the main entrance to the sewage treatment plant that Samuel himself would have got into back in 1911. And it says on the plaque, Haslingdon Rottenstall and Bakeup, Outfall Series Board, Ewood Bridge Purification Works. Reconstructions opened by the Right Honourable Anthony Greenwood, 
Minister of Housing and Local Government, October 4th, 1969. So this side of the building is more moderner than what it was when Samuel obviously passed away in 1911. The next important witness to take to the stand was that of a night watchman by the name of Robert Hargreaves. And he would tell the jury that Samuel had made his way to the Bridge Inn pub at around quarter past nine, if not half past nine, on Monday the 25th. Together, the two men had a few drinks together. Not too many, but just a couple. Robert, as I said, was a night watchman and he would soon make his way to the Outfall Sewerage Water Treatment Works, which was located just a couple of minutes walk from the Bridging Pub. Meanwhile, obviously, Samuel would make his way to the cabin box, which was literally five minutes away from the pub itself. Robert would also tell the jury that he jokingly said to Samuel that he should perhaps get himself a bottle and bring it down to the Water Treatment Works, where they could have a drink together later in the evening, to which Samuel replied he couldn't because the club would be closed by them. I'm wondering if Samuel was allowed breaks from the signal box in between certain trains passing through, because his next comment, like I said, would be he couldn't because the club would be closed by then. So did he mean the pub would be shut so he couldn't buy a drink to take to Robert that evening, we will never know that. Now at the inquiry, the deputy clerk for the water board himself, a man by the name of Mr. Bugler, would question Robert Hargreaves over this. And he asked Robert, have you ever seen Samuel in the waterworks before? Have you ever met up with him before? And, and Robert himself basically said, no, never. As far as he was aware, Samuel had never trespassed onto their property before that. So then Mr. Bugler pushed it and said, you do know your job, you do know your requirements as a night watchman and how illegal it would be to have visitors on the premises after hours. To which the night watchman said, yes, I know my responsibilities and I know that I would have been in big trouble if I had allowed such a thing to have happened. And he would mention a recent case or some trouble that he'd had with four other people prior to the 25th of September in that these people had made their way into the treatment works and he had to escort them off promptly because if he didn't and something bad had happened obviously Robert himself would have been held or held liable for that event to occur so he knew his responsibilities full well now, I know what you guys are going to be thinking now is, well, if Robert knew his job and he knew how serious it was or an offence for people unauthorised to make their way into the treatment works after hours, then why would he invite Samuel down in the first place? Now, Robert would answer that question. It was put to him by Mr. Bugler. And Robert answered it simply by saying he was only joking when he asked Samuel to bring a bottle with him. And obviously when Samuel said he couldn't do that because the club would be closed, Robert replied saying, well, we won't bother them. That's how he got out of that one. Elijah Sutcliffe Law, manager of the Surrey's Works, was then questioned about how a man could easily have gotten into one of the many tanks. He simply replied saying that a man who got into the tank could easily get out if he could swim or he might get out by getting hold of the side of the tank. The top of the tank was within three inches of the ground level. To get to the tank, the deceased would have had to trespass. The gates of the works were closed at night, but never locked. Now Elijah would also be pressed on how difficult it would have been for anybody to get inside the works. And as I said, the gates were never locked. They were shut, but never locked. So anybody could have easily got into the works. It was then asked, how difficult it would have been to have seen their way around the works because it would have been extremely dark with hardly any lighting. Now Elijah replied saying that anybody who got into the works were at risk because as I said, it was very, very dark. The tanks themselves were only three inches high off the ground, but there was a coping stone which was roughly three foot 
wide. So if anybody had have gone into the works at that period, back in the 1900s, it's extremely dark. They could have easily have stubbed their foot on the coping stone. They could have fa fallen forward. They may well have caught their head. We don't know. But if that, that, if that was the case, and this is exactly what had happened to Samuel, he could have been unconscious in the raw sewerage. And this is how, obviously, he would drown. Now, the deputy coroner who was overseeing the inquiry into the death of Samuel Gaines, he told the jury to rule out any possibility of it being suicide. They'd all heard the testimony from his wife, Francis Maria, and that of some of the employers at the Langston Yorkshire Railway Company. Everybody gave him a good reference. And like I said, there was nothing bothering him at home or at work. People who knew Samuel, like I said, they gave him a good character reference. And it wasn't just family or people he worked with, but it was also neighbours. It was friends. It was people who knew him. So the deputy coroner told the jury not to go down the route of suicide and that this was merely an accident and that Samuel had decided to visit Robert Hargreaves in between the trains going to and from uh, the Rottenstall to Ravensbottom and vice versa. There must have been a window, a gap, where it was feasible that Samuel had enough time to do this visit. So it was up to the jury to make their decision on the verdict on the death of Samuel and to decide if it was suicide, if it was accidental or was there something more sinister afoot. The jury in the end did what the coroner, the deputy coroner asked. They ruled out suicide and there was never any talk of anything sinister happening to Samuel and that it indeed was an accidental death. And that is exactly what the verdict was, accidental death. It does seem that Samuel had decided to visit Robert Hargreaves in between a window, a window of opportunity, if you will, between the trains coming to and from Rottenstall to Ramsbottom and vice versa. It does seem that there was a window of opportunity. But it's also, for myself and for Vicky, it also seems completely out of character for this poor man to do what he did. He had never been seen at the series works before, prior to the 25th of September. Nobody saw him actually enter the series works. Robert Hargreaves himself never saw him enter the series works. So why did he do it? Why did Samuel make that short trek to go to visit a man when he'd never done that before? It is an, a bizarre, it's a curious case. So Robert's all right saying that he didn't see him come. But let's be honest, he also, in the inquest, said he oh, was just joking with him. He wasn't expecting him to come. Why would he, knowing his responsibilities, let him come? Yeah. Or invite him, should I say? I believe Robert lied. I believe Robert did see him come that night. Do you think Robert knows more about this story yeah. than that makes And I don't eye. think it probably was an accident. It makes me wonder if he was the cause of the accident, so to speak. So you have a theory, don't you, about this may be something more, it could be money orientated. Yeah. Now, Vicky had this idea that perhaps Robert knows more about this story than, than meets the eye and that um, perhaps Samuel may have been in debt somewhere and Robert... Yeah, gambling maybe, may, cards. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is they've made this plan to go back to the waterworks to pay off the debt somehow, whatever, yeah. to discuss the, the debt. Yeah. And something transpired. Yeah. and Robert may well have caused the death of Samuel. Obviously, there's, there's, yeah. there's no proof of this, is there? There's no proof, but it, otherwise it doesn't make sense. It's out of character. Yeah. Samuel, there's got to be a reason. Samuel, by all accounts, he had routines. Mm. He came from a happy family. People respected him, people looked up to him. His employers loved the way he worked. Yeah. And he had never done anything out of character like this before. And yet on this one time he does go out of character, he loses his life. 
The only person who's very iffy in the story is this Robert. Robert Hargreaves, the night watchman. Yeah. He was very iffy. His stories, one minute he's saying this, one minute he's saying that. He knew, he knew that you can't do this. He knew that he wasn't going to come. No, if you invite somebody, I'm not being funny. He, he, he says he jokingly said to him, bring a bottle with you yeah. sometime this evening. Because even Mr. Bugler picked up on the fact that Robert had these really important... What's the one looking for? He had an important role at the waterworks. Yeah. He was a night watchman. He couldn't allow people into these places because of the dangers, because of the hazards. And he knew that he would lose his job if he did so. So like, like even Mr. Bugger said, so why did he invite this gentleman, Samuel Gaines, in the first place? Yeah. And like Vicky says, he it's basically not. backtracked and said, well, I was joking when I said that to him. And when he said he couldn't get the bottle because the club would be closed, he turned and says, well, we'll leave it there then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He kind of knew straight away he'd put his foot in it, but backtracked, didn't he? In so, my eyes, Robert knows more. So Robert knows a lot more yeah. than what was reported. He obviously didn't want to take any responsibility for that. Yeah, and it seems really bizarre how this inquiry took place on a Friday, two days after the death, yeah. or the, body's disco the, bo the discovery of the body, I should say. It was a very quick inquiry, and one that lasted barely two hours. It does seem a bizarre case, doesn't it? Robert knows more. I'd be interested to know your thoughts down below. Tell us what you think could have been behind the death of poor Samuel Gaines. Now, it is conceivable that Samuel left the cabin box, and as Vicky's pointed out, this has all changed. He may well have gone across the lines and through the old yard, the courtyard along here, and made his way onto Manchester Road and towards where the sewage works located. However, we do have historical records of people walking along these stretches of railway, and especially here in Haslingdon, Helmshore and surrounding areas. We have records of people being killed back in the 1900s by trains because they were illegally walking on these stretch of networks. Now, it's conceivable that Samuel himself noticed somebody walking along this line. He has left the cabin box and he's chased after them down here, obviously under the bridge and to the opposite side where he's then basically been side of the sewerage works. He may have chased them into the sewerage works where something tragic has transpired. That is just one theory that I myself have. And like I said, it may be absolute nonsense but it is a theory nevertheless. If one of my theories, let's just argue and say it is correct, Samuel would have walked along the Langston Yorkshire Railway just a couple more hundred yards in that direction and then he would have hopped over a short wall or a little rail to get into the sewerage works but we're going to carry on walking in this direction. I hope we might get a better view of the, the water treatment plant. And then obviously we get a better sense of just what may have happened all those years ago, back in 1911. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, perhaps through the camera lens. We've made our way down to the opposite side of the embankment on the road. The railway line runs parallel with the sewerage works, but there's just too much foliage, there's too many trees. We're not actually going to get any shots of the treatment plant from where we are. So we're going to go back up to the main road and then we'll continue with the story of Samuel. But it's an interesting one and it will be interesting to know your thoughts and theories down below. What possessed Samuel to make his way to the treatment works? either late evening or during the early hours of September the 25th or 26th of 1911.
The bridge in Public House where Samuel had met Robert Hargreaves on the night of his disappearance was that building there. And as you can see, I think it's more residential now. And it's now known as New Bridge House, 1863. And it's here where Robert and Samuel spoke on the 25th of September. And it's also here where the inquiry into Samuel's death obviously took place. And it was also here where the body of Samuel was brought to upon his discovery on the 27th of September, which was a Wednesday. So from where the bridge in pub once stood, 13 High Street was just behind it, just here and where these trees are. And it's here where Samuel Alexander Gaines lived with his wife, Francis, his younger daughter, Francis, his other daughter, Nora, and a third child by the name of Marion. So you would have had a row of houses all the way across here with number 13 just being on the corner. And I think it went from three, five, seven, nine, all the way up to the end, which looking at the maps would have brought you around about here. So this is where the former home of Samuel and his family once lived. Literally a five, if not 10 minute walk away from the cabin box and only a two minute walk away from the bridge in pub. And as you can see, it's just all gone. Trees have replaced those, those houses. All this week, myself and Vicky, we've spent looking as best as we can for the burial records of Samuel Alexander Gaines. And we've, come, we've drawn a complete blank. We cannot find anything. We also wish to thank Angela and her partner, Patrick, for also trying to help us. Now, Angela is a Curious Club member, but she is also passionate about genealogy. And she kindly offered her services a few weeks ago to help with forthcoming stories such as this one. Even Angela, who is really, really good at digging up history, has also drawn a complete blank on this one. We have a gut feeling Samuel may be buried at St. James's in Haslingdon, but it is only a gut feeling. So we're not going to go and spend a lot of time looking for a grave that may not be there. From experience, we've been to St. James's many times, especially this time of year, and it is so difficult to read the headstones because of all the foliage, all the decay, the leaves that have now fallen on the graves. It would be an almost impossible task to locate him, even if he was there. If, however, information comes to light in the near future, in the next few days, weeks, we will gladly go back up and do a short video to show you guys exactly where poor Samuel is buried. Now, as for his wife, Frances Maria Gaines, she sadly passed away in 1913 due to ill health. She had suffered from ill health for many years. We also tried to find her resting place, thinking it may lead to the same resting place, the same burial plot as her husband, Samuel. Again, we've drawn a complete blank with that one. So it's not for the lack of trying, it's just the fact the records aren't there. They must be somewhere, but at the moment, neither of us, myself, Vicky, Angela or Patrick, we cannot find anything substantial. So that is all from here in Ewo Bridge and outside the water treatment works as it is today. We do hope you find this story fascinating, just like all the other more famous crimes. This one isn't famous, it's a little known one. I doubt anybody has heard of before. But if you have heard about it, comment down below and tell us your thoughts. Why do you think Samuel left this signal box to make his way here? Was it for an innocent drink with Robert Hargreaves? After all, Samuel didn't have a drink to take with him. Tell us your thoughts down below. Was there something more sinister afoot as Vicky has mentioned? Be interesting to know your thoughts. But in the meantime, guys, we're going to leave it here, like I said, from outside the water treatment works. Don't forget to please share this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. 
we are closing in on 10,000 subscribers. We don't really want to keep pushing that narrative out, but the facts are the facts. We are very close to 10,000 subscribers and we do have something special planned for the 10,000 figure once we hit it. We're not going to say what that is just yet, but as soon as we get there, we'll let you know more. But if you can do all those things, share, comment, subscribe, we will greatly appreciate it. But in the meantime, guys, as you always say, want you to stay safe, stay curious, and we'll be back soon with more tales from our dark, but at times, glorious past.